Greetings everyone, it is Gleecon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. Stay a while and listen to this one as we drop now to six years before the Dark Portal. We're getting closer and closer. Um, there's going to be a few episodes within this one year. On the last one, we basically set up that um, Nerjul was, was defeated. He was broken. He realized he's been being played. The ancestors are bummed with him, and he's, like, taken in to be tortured and just chained up and kept to the side by Gul'dan and his little warlock clan. All right, this one's called the Black Rock's Ascendant. The Black Rock clan is the main clan of Gorgrond. It's led by Black Hand, and the second in command is, I believe, Orgrim. Orgrim Doomhammer, who has the Doomhammer weapon. Here we go. While Gul'dan betrayed Ner'zhul, the orcs continued their war against the Draenei. The clans crushed small outposts across the world, but they were not as successful with seizing larger settlements. The Draenei's defenses were mighty, and their armies worked in unison. The orcs were quite the opposite. Rival chieftains like Blackhand and Gromash Hellscream often argued over battle tactics. These disagreements ignited fighting between the clans. They were a horde in name only. Kill Jaden was well aware of this. He had watched the war unfold with growing displeasure. Gul'dan yearned to take Nerjul's place and control the Horde, but the Demon Lord denied him the opportunity. As useful as the Warlock was, he couldn't serve as a leader. His strength lay in subterfuge and manipulation, activities best performed in the shadows. The Orcs needed a true leader. They needed a war chief. And we know that's a precursor because that's what the leader of the Horde is called. Kil'jaeden's voice thundered in Gul'dan's mind. He commanded the orc to find another leader for the Horde. Without one, the clans were doomed to crumble and fall to the Draenei. Though Gul'dan was furious that his master would not allow him to rule over the Horde, he obeyed. The warlock's lust for power was second only to his fear of Kil'jaeden. Gul'dan knew of only one orc with the strength and confidence to exert control over the Horde. Chieftain Blackhand. Of all the clans, his Black Rocks had been the most successful against the Draenei. If they led the Horde, they could impose their strict military discipline on the other orcs. The Black Rocks could also use their elemental forges to arm the clans and create massive war machines to destroy the Draenei's defenses. Gul'dan met with Blackhand and urged him to take up the mantle of War Chief. If he did, the Warlock promised to grant his, cl grant his clan otherworldly strength. Not only would Blackhand's shaman wield power again, but his soldiers would become mightier than those of the other clans. Blackhand himself would be remembered as the greatest orc leader who had ever lived. Um, I don't know that that's true. Shocking. Um, I also have a feeling that this uh, Blackhand shaman is going to become a warlock. The warlock knew it would take more than promises to win Blackhand's support. Gul'dan trained some of the Blackrock clan shaman in the ways of fell magic. He also taught these new initiates how to magically increase the number of soldiers in their clan. The warlocks flooded adolescent orcs with fell power. The influx of magic caused the orcs to grow rapidly and gave them the strength of adult warriors. But another consequence was the psychological effect this technique had. The fell energies warped the young orcs' minds and left them prone to sudden outbursts of violence. And I think you get that spell with the warlocks like a buffing berserk um, spell. And I think that's even the racial trait of the orcs. They have like a kind of like a rage they can go into. I wonder if those are related. And there are fell orcs, if nothing else. Regardless of the drawbacks, Blackhand was astounded by the results. He ordered the warlocks to transform his young sons, Dalrend and Mame, into proper soldiers. Seeing Gul'dan as a useful ally, Blackhand agreed to lead the horde. The warlock vowed to create a clandestine order to help them watch over the orcs and maintain control. This group would be known as the Shadow Council, and Blackhand would be one of its members. What Gul'dan did not reveal was that his trusted Shadow Moon warlocks would form the inner circle of this secretive order, and they would owe their loyalty to him and him alone. Blackhand's inclusion in the Shadow Council was merely a tactic used by Gul'dan to trick the war chief into thinking he would hold authority over all aspects of the Horde. Distrust festered between Gul'dan and Blackhand, and for good reason. They saw each other as a means to an end. Gul'dan intended to use Blackhand as a puppet ruler. Through the Shadow Council, the Warlock would control the Horde and its destiny. Meanwhile, Blackhand was no fool, and he assumed Gul'dan would seek power for himself. 
He, would, he was confident he would not be used by the warlock. To the contrary, he would use Gul'dan to secure his place in Orcish history. Okay, so we have the Black Rock clan ascending. And in that we mean the leader of that clan is going to become the first war chief. He also is going to start enriching his forces with fell orcs. So you take baby orcs and you can turn them into full-grown fighting machines that are also like berserker crazy. So we have the origin of fell orcs. We also here have the Shadow Council. Um, and I'm not fully sure if the Shadow Council stays good or bad. Or has a little bit of both. Um, and we'll see kind of how that plays out in the future. I'm trying to remember if that little sect of orcs in the dark area um, underneath Orgrimmar where you can get into that first dungeon, the lowest level dungeon you can do in Classic and and uh, Black Fathom Deeps. Maybe, no, that's the other one. I can't remember what it's called. The one that's in Orgrimmar that's a pain to get to um, if you're Alliance. If that's the Shadow Council, in which case that would mean that some of the Shadow Council must obviously stay good. Alrighty, so we got a couple more episodes and I think they're going to have to do mostly with what happens with this development with the Shadow Council. And that's all going to be happening in this year or six before the Horde. Another episode in the pipes, 5x5. Five five. I thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the next episode of Lore of Warcraft.